Hi, so this will be somewhat of a tarot tip reading. We're going to have a look at the Magician. Now, the Magician, in a lot of ways, I feel like is often misunderstood. A lot of people will sort of place mastery on him um, and often think of manifestation and magic, obviously, which that's not entirely off. But the thing to understand about the Magician is that he is not entirely about that. In a lot of ways, the Magician is um, a neophyte. And if I'm not mistaken, in a lot of ways, his cloak can demonstrate that because white and red, I feel like might be a neophyte color. I, I could be mistaken, but it also does symbolize um, perfect alchemy, I've read before. The white and red, something about that, you know, and then not to mention all the roses. Um, it does remind one of the rose cross. So, but the magician in a lot of ways is a student. He has just gained his first bit of knowledge. That infinity above his head represents infinite potential. See, the magician is perfectly capable and has the ability to create anything he pleases. But the question is, will he rise to the occasion? Will he challenge himself? Will he do the necessary work to create it. As you can see, he's also in a position that is sort of um, pre-action. He's about to move. His arms going up and down also have been said to symbolize the hermetic saying, as above, so below. Now, you can see the altars are, the altar has all of the um, suits of the tarot. The sword, which is associated with logic, the cup, which is, or, or, you know, associated with air as well as logic and, and you know, thinking, thought. Um, the cups are more so of water and emotion. The wand is our passion, our fire, our drive. And the pinnacles are of more tangible or earthly matters. They've often been called coins, so they can represent finances. But, so he is learning to master all of the tools of the altar, all the tools of life, balance the elements within himself. It is an optimistic, and I would definitely say masculine card. Um, even the, the sacred scroll that he holds in his hand appears as phallic. Um, the background is yellow, so that usually suggests more of a positive, uplifting energy and also would remind one of the sun. Now, this is the Magician from the Rider Waite Tarot deck. Um, this is a deck I recommend for any beginner because it is, for one, probably the most commonly used deck today, at least in America. Um, and most every tarot deck you get will have symbolism from the Rider Waite. So if you can learn to translate the Rider Waite deck, you'll be able to translate most any tarot deck. Um, and I'll give an example. So as you can see in this deck, it's, it's different, but it's not. You know, we have the arms in the position, we have the infinity above the head. Uh, it looks like he may be more so, well, you know, it's sort of illustrated like a wand because he's wielding that light, which also does have symbolism in magic. Um, and you know, the thing, and he has the altar tools, he has the, the roses, you know, the background's a little bit different. It's like a sunset, but you see what I'm saying. There's influence, clearly, there's influence from the Rider Waite deck. Um, now, the thing is, with the, the, the process of initiation, because... Tarot cards, if I'm not mistaken, they weren't even normally, they weren't really intended to be used the way that they are today. It actually described a process of initiation or a process of enlightenment or whatever you want to call it. And throughout all kinds of traditions and religions, there um, are these stories 
of initiation. And that doesn't necessarily mean with like a magical order. You know, we go through the initiation process uh, throughout life. And, you know, it is a repeating cycle. So that's also the interesting thing about the magician um, being number one. He's sort of the first step, but in a lot of ways, I consider the fool the first card because it is number zero. And some people, I think, put 22 on it because it would technically be the 22nd card of the major arcana. But the way it was put to me one time that I really liked was that you are number 22 because that's the master builder number and you're the one sort of constructing and dictating this universe. And so, but the fool being the zero point is sort of that process of regeneration, um, totality. And, you know, so if we were looking at reincarnation, the fool would be the in-between state. He, you know, the fool is basically ignorant, not in, um, not to be mistaken with stupid, but ignorant. He, he's taking his first leap into the unknown. He's finding his, it's, it's his first dose of wisdom that the, the mundane life that he once knew will no longer fulfill. So he, he takes the leap and thus becomes the magician. The student is born. And then, you know, going on to the high priestess, which I'll get into on another video. Now, with my magician card, because I'm, I'm illustrating a deck, and I've decided to just start on it. I'm keeping mine pretty minimal. I wanted to try some different symbolism. So th this is my magician card that I just finished. Now, as you can see, this is very different from the Rider Waite. Um, and it was inspired by another card, which if I have time after this, I'll pull out the reference that inspired it and explain that one to you. Um, but you can see that his robe is different, but he's wearing the white and red. I wanted to stick with that as far as the, the perfect alchemy thing. Um, and, you know, again, I wanted to sort of note the fact of him being a student because you can see he's holding his grimoire here and the idea is that he's extending his wand to create this um, symbol, which I chose the Aurora Boris to um, place there because, you know, he's learning how to perfect his work. He's learning how to bring his great work, his will, his magnum opus, uh, you know, into fruition. He's, he, but he's still growing. He's learning to, to channel it. And so you can't see it very well, but, um, on one page, I chose the symbol of the eternal lamp of knowledge or of wisdom it, it, it rep you know for me in this context it's you know that spark to grow that spark to gain enlightenment the spark to learn the, the curiosity and then we have the two pillars so that's um so he's sort of navigating the grimoire and thus you know mastering his practice mastering his ritual um His, he's pursuing his work. I put the crown on his head simply because of nobility and the idea of wearing medals and, you know, the, the whole royal science. And plus, honestly, I just sort of liked the way the crown looked, so I just popped it on there. <laughs> um, but the art and science of the occult or of magic or the esoteric, you know, is very much considered like the royal science. And um, it also, for me, references uh, King Solomon. And so, again, I chose the infinity because of the infinite potential um, for the magician to either reach or not reach, and then Roman, Roman numeral and magician. So, you know, this is the magician card for my deck that I'm working on. Um, and yeah, so I think that probably about sums up this video. Um, if you want to support the channel and support the deck I'm making and all that stuff, feel free to check out my Patreon to go subscribe to that because it's great. That's where all